One of the most common questions I get asked is something to this effect. Krista, I have a family member. I have a spouse or my children or my parents or somebody right around me in my home absolutely is not on board with this whole prepping thing. In fact, I don't know what to say that doesn't either make me look like a nag or a crazy person. What can I do? Well, stick around because in the next few minutes I want to give you just kind of a short list of some really simple things you might do that are going to introduce the idea of prepping in a different sort of way. I think it's going to help you, so stick around. Some of you watching have been prepping your entire life. Very few things to surprise you. In fact, you might be a skeptic or somebody who believes in a whole lot of conspiracies that come down the pike. Or perhaps you find yourself at the very opposite of the spectrum where you just really haven't even thought about becoming a prepper of any sort your entire life. And you're finally just seeing signs around you or in the news that make you think, hey, I might want to pay attention and I might want to prepare a little bit more. And wherever you find yourself on the spectrum, I'll say this, you probably have someone in your home or right nearby you at work or even your marriage partner who thinks the opposite of you. Well, I want to give you a couple of simple tips that are going to help you introduce this in a way to them that is a little less offensive, that might get their wheels turning in their mind, that makes them want to become more prepared as well. This is very important that we all think about these things. But just nagging, just bringing it up over and over again is probably the least effective method for you to, to take. So let me just start here. I'm going to encourage you to start prepping yourself in silence before you've even said a word to your children, to your spouse, whoever that is around you that's going to be resistant. I just want you to be the one that's prepared. You don't have to go all out being all tactical and, and, and militaristic about it or anything. I just want you to think of what is the most likely situation that I could find myself in where I was thankful that I had thought ahead and prepared might be just sticking a granola bar in your purse, right? Or for you men, it might be just starting to carry a pocket knife for the first time in your life. It could be something just as simple as that. And then take steps one at a time, baby steps, as you get yourself prepared while the people around you are living with you. What's going to happen is situations like this. I'll give you an example. I always carry a bag in the back of my vehicle that has all kinds of necessities in it. And even though I have people around me who are not prepared at all for anything, they see whenever there's a situation where I am able to quickly say, hey, I have the answer for that. I've got needle nose pliers on my Leatherman tool. Let me grab it and give it to you to use. Or I just happen to have matches with me. Or yes, I can give you that or have a Band-Aid for you or a first aid kit. The other day I found myself at the storage unit and someone right next to me had pulled up in a car, gotten out and somehow dropped a huge piece of metal on their leg. It was absolutely bleeding profusely. They needed to get to a hospital. It was that bad. But very quickly I was able to calmly grab my bag, get the medical kit out of it, find what needed to tie off their situation and cleanse it and we were able to get them to help. And everything stayed calm. It's really nice to be able to be prepared yourself, even if no one else around you is. So start there and don't even say a word. Don't say, oh, look what I did. Look how prepared I was. Nope, just smile and go on. Okay, now I wanna to talk to you a little bit and you're going to tune me out if you don't have children perhaps, but I want you to be thinking about these tips even just for your spouse or the people around you. I want you to personally commit to staying curious and imaginative. Now, when you were a child, this was easy. You would see something crawling over in the grass and you would go over and look at it. And if it was pick upable, you would pick it up. If you saw wildflowers, you always had to smell them at least once to find out what do they smell like. Is that little bird that fell out of the tree on the ground there, is it something I could maybe pick up and get back into its nest? Or you name it, you were curious, you were imaginative, anything was possible. And as you became an adult and became more rational, you forgot a lot of those skills that 
are very worthy of rekindling. I want to encourage you to do that. And as you do it for yourself, it's contagious for the people around you. They know you like to pick th those wildflowers. They know that if they, you see a iridescent bug crawling along, you're probably gonna go have a second look at it. I want you to live your life that way so that the people around you start leaning in and it, participating in that imagination and curiosity. Okay, you can all do this no matter who you've got around you. Go on a walk outside. Today we find ourselves in a beautiful park. People are everywhere around me walking and playing and that's one of the best places to start. Just with your spouse. Don't even talk about prepping. Just go take a walk outside. Listen, smell, touch everything. Take in all of the curiosities around you and just enjoy it. Read adventure stories to your children. And if you don't have a sense of adventure yourself, go get yourself some good adventure books and read them. <laughs> but read out loud to your kids and en enjoy getting them those creative stories like Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer books where they're caught up in to some sort of an adventure that has crises to overcome, difficulties to become victorious over, all kinds of scenarios that put them into some sort of a squeeze where they've got to find them themselves out. They learn about themselves, they learn about the surroundings and life, and they grow in knowledge and wisdom. All of those things are going to be of benefit, and you haven't even said the word prepping yet to them. It just helps them get in sort of that mindset of, how do I fix this? How do I overcome this obstacle? It gives them those thoughts before you've even planted it in them. While you're at it, I want you to explore games that you can play as a family. I'll tell you one of the favorites I grew up playing was Worst Case Scenario. And though it is a little tongue in cheek and not exactly realistic, it sure gets the family talking about possible scenarios that you would need to save your life out of and, and starts the conversation for you. There are also many card games out there like foraging card games where every card has a different type of edible or medicinal plant you can learn. And that's very handy. There are all kinds of games though and I would love to hear what your favorites are. Movies. Have you thought of having a movie night where you get all the family in there, get some good popcorn popped for everybody, and sit down and enjoy something that is going to help you learn about all of those virtues that we talked about earlier? When I was little, I remember us watching Seven Alone. What an incredible story of seven children that made it on the Oregon Trail. That and so many other movies. Pop over to our Facebook page, and I would love for you to weigh in over there, and you can learn from other people also because the question I have posted this week is what is your favorite suggestion for others that is a survival movie or a movie that has courageous concepts that the whole family needs to learn from teach your children courage when you have brought up at the supper table scenarios where you've asked questions like how would you handle a situation like this I want you to bring up topics like that where it opens the conversation and you all start talking about things of what is the best response, what's the most courageous, what's the most valiant, what is the most admirable and honorable. There's very little of that in our society today. And so when you're able to ask questions that bring it about in conversation just naturally, you're going to find it's this beautiful thing that automatically brings it up and out of the, the mouths of the people around you, the answers that are needed for the moment. Get your kids also involved in 4-H, in um, FFA, in the, the Scouts. I guess they just call it that nowadays. It's, it's not Boy Scouts or go, Girl Scouts anymore, but you know what I'm talking about. Or some of your churches have caravans and um, there are different programs where the kids get outside and learn how to build fires. They learn how to make tourniquets and, and do minor first aid. They learn how to climb trees. They learn how to build forts and all of the things. Get them involved in that and help them to enjoy it. If you're worried about them and their safety, then you go be the scout leader yourself. Get involved with it. 
If you haven't before, I'm going to encourage you to go out and go camping. And if you just say, absolutely not, we can't live without air conditioning, then go glamping. Glamping is where you do the glamorous version of camping. You might even have the chandelier hanging in the tree, the little candelabras and the air conditioning unit in the camper and the romance going on. That that's what glamping is. Go out and glamp if you need to. If your family has never even gone outside, then start in your living room. You can set up a tent there and start camping there. But once you've conquered that, then get out into the yard, then go to a campground, do whatever you need to take the baby steps to reach where you need to be so that you are at, at ease in the wilderness and you could probably survive if you didn't have all of the comforts of home with you. When you go out there, I want to encourage you to take walkie talkies because if you have children, that is one of the most fun things to do. And it gets little boys' minds and little girls' minds already thinking about the uses for them, why we would need to communicate if we didn't have cell phones or didn't have the normal ways. How convenient is this? How creative is this? It gets those wheels turning learn how to skip rocks, learn how to catch frogs, all of those different things. Learn how to ask the questions together and be curious together. Don't act like you know all of the answers. Ask the questions and then learn the solution together. Along that same lines, learn together. You can do this even if you're just dating somebody who is resistant to prepping, or if you're married of 50 years and the other person has no desire to do anything like prepping, just say you want to learn something together. Ask them to take you on a date where you go and learn how to bake sourdough bread down at the co-op or, or go to the farmer's market where they're teaching cooking classes or a foraging walk. There are meetup groups in your town that probably have professionals that know every single edible in the edible forest in the park around you. Go on a walk where they teach you all of those things. Learn how to do stuff out on the on the vehicles, on the cars, fixing the lawnmower. If your husband is the expert at that and you have no knowledge of it, he is gonna love it if you say, hey, I have never learned. Would you teach me how to change the oil? Would you teach me how to change the flat tire if I ever have that happen? He is going to love you being curious, or perhaps she's the expert at that. Ask her to show you, but learn together and ask the other person what they know that they might teach you. Learn how to go fishing. Take a first aid class together. I wanna to encourage you to maybe get another pet. Some of you have never had pets, but just having even a house pet is going to teach you a lot. But when I was a little girl, the first thing I know my parents got besides the dog and the cat were two chickens. We had Bruiser and Cheaper were their names. And we had a little chicken house and they laid just enough eggs for us to have fresh eggs every morning for breakfast. I'm just gonna encourage you start small. It doesn't have to be anything wild and crazy and out there. You don't have to move to the country and get a full farm without any knowledge of it. Start with two chickens, get your own bruiser and cheaper. <laughs> All right, let's talk about gift giving. Now, you can't truly give the gift of preparedness and don't think that you can because it starts with your mind and your spirit and your heart and your knowledge base and then those extra tools and things that you can gift each other. But let's start there. I want you to consider, make sure every member of your family has a copy of the Word of God. If they don't already have the full, complete Bible, get them one. That's a wonderful gift that's going to give them the opportunity to prepare. Also something like a Leatherman where they make a Leatherman tool that's for little children all the way up to Mac Daddy sized knives with every gadget on there. Another idea would be something like a battle box. You can Google that and learn about it yourself. I might have links below this video that help you get there, but it's like a subscription where every month or every three months they send your spouse or whoever you're giving this to a box full of survival goodies that are going to help them in so many different scenarios. You could even give a bug out bag to someone. However, those are so specific. I really encourage you to not because they might think that's a cop out, throw it in the back and think that they're prepared when in reality they aren't. But you could technically pack a small bag for each person in your family and wrap it up as a gift. 
I'm almost through with this list, but I want to encourage you, if you haven't done this before, what an experience it is to join a local co-op where you can get fresh milk and fresh eggs and fresh meats. You can get, join a vegetable co-op. There is something totally different when you have grown your own or raised your own or join a co-op and taste the fresh, locally grown honey or meat that is available. That is a great way for your family to grow accustomed to how much better it is to have your own or to participate in something like that and meet the other people of like mind. Think of whatever disasters might be to your local area. If you're in a tornado alley, prepare first for tornadoes. If you happen to be where there might be a tsunami next to the ocean, practice preparing for that scenario first. Start with something local that's very likely to affect you at some point in the future or has in the past. That's a good place for you to begin where your family isn't going to be super resistant. After you've done all these things, then I want you to start the conversation. So you've lived it, you've pointed at it, you've tasted it, you've taken the classes, you have enjoyed being together and participated in all this together. Only then might it be appropriate for you to say, you know what, this gets me thinking. There are so many other ways we probably should be prepared that we haven't even thought of. And then they might be open to you, perhaps suggesting a few that you could also prepare with them on and how you can prepare as a family. Conversation is absolutely paramount and important, but there are a whole lot of steps that might need to take place before you open that door where everyone in the, around the table is going to be receptive to listening. There have to be at least a dozen more things I haven't even mentioned, but I did want to leave you with this final thought that in my opinion is the most important. If you're like me, you know this already, that spiritually is the most important kind of prepping that must be done that means anything really. Is there any other kind of prepping if you don't have your spirit right? And that's one thing you certainly can't cram down anyone's throat. So I want to encourage you personally, make sure that you know where you're going to spend eternity. Make sure that you have prepared yourself spiritually, completely, and live in such a way that people ask you about the hope that is in you. That is the most vital way to encourage and inspire others to look at your life and say, hey, I want some of that. There's something different. That's the best kind of prepping and the best kind of contagious prepping, I'll call it, all right? Would you leave your comments below? We wanna hear from you. We would love to hear other suggestions that perhaps have opened the floor for you to be able to share your passion with the people around you. Share this video with somebody that you love and meet us back here next week for another episode. Until then though, would you make it a point to go out and be a blessing to somebody today? <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This final word comes from the Holy Bible. This is in 1 Peter chapter 3, and it's verses 14 through 17. It says this, But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that they have seen in you. Do it with gentleness and respect, and have a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Now go spread the word. <laughs>